Hello and welcome to this video on the VBA dictionary. So the VBA dictionary is very similar to the collection in VBA, but there's one major difference. And the major difference is that when you add an item to the dictionary, it must have a key. So you always add a key and a value. So in this example here, you can see the key and value pairs. So the key in this example will be the customer ID. And the thing to keep in mind is that the customer ID is unique. And this is very useful because it allows us to identify very easily and retrieve the value for each customer. Now, the reason it's called a dictionary is if you think about the real world dictionary, when we want to access a word, we basically go straight to that word and the word is the key. And then the word has a definition and that is the value. So we don't read through the dictionary sequentially. We go through the word and the second thing is the word is unique. So now let's look at some code on how we use the dictionary. So Alt F11 as normal to go into the VBA editor. Now to use the dictionary, we use dim and then we use the variable as normal and we say as new and dictionary. Now dictionary appears here because I've already added a reference. So dictionary is actually a library outside of VBA. So that means we have to use a reference. So you can see I've already added it here. It's Microsoft scripting runtime. It's normally down a bit further if you're adding it. So you have to check this. Now, each time you use a dictionary in a different project, you have to add it. And once you add it, then the dictionary is available. So when we have our dictionary, what we can do is we can add items like this. So we need to add a key and we need to add a value. So we can say, for example, let's add apple and then we'll add how many apples we've sold. And then we'll add orange and then we'll add how many oranges we've sold. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that if we try to add one of these keys again, we get an error. So let's try and add apple again or try and change the value and we'll run the code. You see, we get the runtime error this key is already associated with an element of this collection. So you can see we can't add the item twice. Now, one thing to, to keep in mind about adding an item to the dictionary is that VBA actually has a very nice way of doing it. So imagine we want to update. We want to say Apple now equals 40. So what we can do is we can say if dictionary exists apple then we just want to assign what's ever at that value to equal to 40 otherwise we want to add apple and the new value of 40 And then in the end, let's print it out. So value of apple is and whatever's at that position. So let's step through the code and let's view our watch window. And we'll put it up here. So if we step down and we add the dictionary, so we've already got Apple. So you can just see that our dictionary is one item and it's Apple. Now, if we want to see what's in that position, we have to basically add a watch like this. You can see in position Apple is 60. Now it's added orange. And if we used orange here, we'd see that orange is 78. Now it checks, it says, does Apple exist? It does. So let's set Apple to 40. And then it goes out. Now imagine doing this again and Apple doesn't exist. And we step through the code again. And I would say, does Apple exist? It doesn't. It goes down to the Apple window and adds the Apple and then prints out the value. So let's go to Control G and you can say the value of Apple is 40. So it's printed out three times. So let's run it again. And you can see the value of Apple is 40. Now, the one thing to keep in mind here is that this code seems a bit confusing. And the beauty of this code is that we actually don't need it. All we need is this line. We can get rid of this 
this, this, this. So if Apple doesn't exist in this case, VBA will actually add the Apple for us. So let's step through the code. Apple doesn't exist. We assign 40 to it, but VBA will add the Apple if it doesn't exist. And you can see value of Apple is 40. Now, another beautiful thing we can do here is if we want to add a value. So imagine Apple has a value of 60 and we want to add 40 to it. We can just use this one line of code. It's basically saying whatever's in Apple, add 40 to it and that will give us some result. And then we want to place the result in the current position in Apple. So we step down through this. Apple is 60. Then we, we do this assign and now Apple should be 100 and we print it out and you can see Apple is now 100. So this line is so useful. If we hide, if we hide this, so we, we're basically, the Apple doesn't exist already. This means that we run down through and then it will actually create Apple, put zero in it and then add 40 to it. And now you can see that Apple equals 40. So the beauty of this line is that we don't have to worry if something is already in the dictionary. This one line of code will take care of it for us. So this is the basics on how to use the dictionary. So we'll be looking at more in this series of the dictionary. We'll be looking at different things like the dictionary versus collections. We'll be looking at creating reports, reading from a worksheet, and we're looking at just the different things that we can do with the dictionary. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click on the subscribe button so you'll get notified of upcoming videos. And if you've got any questions about the dictionary, just add them to the comments below this video.